Hey guys, it's Miss Batty here with our last lesson in our series on populations and resources. I'm so excited that we're here today and I'm so proud of all the work that you've been doing over the last few weeks. You've been analyzing evidence, interpreting what this different information means and really have figured out a lot about how populations stay stable or change over time. I'm really excited today to get our final pieces of evidence about the moon jelly populations so that we can make a final conclusion about what's going on there. Let's get started. So what you're going to need for this lesson today is a pencil or pen, some blank or lined paper. I really recommend that you have this out so that you can take notes down or information from the evidence cards that we look at so that you can use it in your final explanation. This is not required, but I really recommend that you find somebody that you can check in with over the next little bit. It could be a family member, it could be a friend that you could message or text during this time, but today we are wrapping up everything and tying our unit together. It will be great for you to have somebody to talk about the evidence with and share your ideas. Also, if you have access to the handouts from lesson three and lesson six, this contains some evidence that might help you with your final explanation that you are going to do at the end of this lesson. In our last lesson, we started to fit, think about how different populations could have affected the moon jelly population. Throughout this unit, we've been collecting evidence about different ways that populations change or stay stable. From the very beginning, we knew that the moon jelly population was increasing. This is what the evidence was telling us. And we realized that this has something to do with the amount of births and deaths in the moon jelly population. The births must be happening more than the deaths. Now, there are many reasons that this could be occurring. And we have been looking at these different reasons throughout our unit and analyzing what the evidence is telling us. Today, we will look at some final pieces of evidence together to put the story all together. So we first are going to start off by looking at the algae population. This is the resource population of the resource of the moon jellies. I would like you to pause your video if you can and look at the evidence for yourself. What is it telling you about the algae populations? Why does this matter? How could the algae have had any effect on the moon jelly populations? I would encourage you to draw out the food web for yourself so that you can annotate with arrows like we have been doing throughout our unit. It might help to write out the step-by-step -step cause and effect chain that you think could be occurring here. So, as I mentioned, pause the video, jot down your own notes, talk with somebody that's a family member or friend, and then check back to see what I'm thinking. So here is the algae uh, evidence card for what the population of algae is doing. Now, something that I find really interesting right away is that this doesn't seem like the best of evidence as most of the samples are in one area. This is not great uh, because as we know, we really like to have a picture of the whole um, sea where the moon jellies are. So I would have liked to see some samples in different areas. However, there are quite a few samples um, and so it maybe is some medium evidence for us. And so we do know that the moon jelly uh, is increasing. So I'm gonna go ahead and draw a little arrow here uh, to show that. Now, if we take a look at our evidence card, we've got our populations here, um, our samples, and it says that they concluded the population was stable and then started to increase around 2000. So if I draw my graph of this, right, if this was, um, it was stable and then around 2000, uh, so that's kind of in the middle here, we can get it in here. It was kind of stable um, and started to increase around this time. 
Now, this really looks similar to me to the moon jelly graph. Um, and so we can note here that the algae was increasing very similarly to the moon jelly. Now, as we know, the algae is the resource population of the zooplankton. So if the algae is increasing, that would mean an increase in ESM. Ooh, my handwriting is terrible on here. Uh, but an increase in ESM for that zooplankton, which would mean more birds. So that could be how the algae is playing a role here. We need to look again to see uh, what the evidence was telling us about the zooplankton. Was that actually happening that the zooplankton were increasing in size at this point? So our next piece of evidence that we have is for the walleye pollock. And as we know, the walleye pollock are in competition with the moon jelly because they have the same resource population. So just like before, I'd like you to pause the video, take a look at the evidence for yourself. What is it telling you? Is it strong evidence? How is the walleye pollock related to the moon jellies? And how could these things be affecting one another? All right, so we have the walleye pollock here. And as I mentioned before, we knew um, that the moon jelly and the walleye pollock are in competition. So I'm gonna just write a little note for myself. So they both are getting energy storage molecules from the zooplankton. And that means that as we know, they could be affecting one another. So let's take a look at what the evidence is showing us. Well, the first thing I noticed that's really awesome is how large uh, the spread is of the sample sites. I see samples spread out completely. Um, they're not really just in one area. There's quite a few samples, which is great. And I am seeing that the population was stable and started to decrease around 2000. So if we go ahead and add this in here, and here's our time um, and our population size is over here. If we go ahead and, and think about this, this is telling us we have this kind of stable population, but it did start to decrease over time. So let's make a note of that here, uh, that the walleye pollock was decreasing. Now, how would this affect things? Well, the walleye pollock does not eat the moon jelly, and the moon jelly also does not eat it, right? So it can't be causing directly more de deaths or births. But something interesting, as we, we saw, is it is in competition. And so if the walleye pollock is decreasing in size, how would that be affecting the zooplankton? The walleye pollock is the consumer of the zooplankton. If these are decreasing, they're gonna have an, a decreased need for that ESM. And that will mean that they are eating those zooplankton far less often. So we're gonna see then maybe that there are less deaths in the zooplankton population. Um, so that could mean that that zooplankton population was able to, to actually increase in size um, and cause more energy to be available for our moon jellies. So we really would wanna see if the zooplankton was having any changes during that time. And that was some information that we got in lesson six. All right, and our last new population that we have is the orca population. Now, as in the other evidence cards, I'd like you to pause the video and take a look again for yourself. What are you noticing um, about the sample size, the sample sites? What is this evidence telling you? And then how does this orca connect to these other populations and to the moon jellies? Go ahead, make sure you pause and think about, jot down your own notes um, and then check back in with us. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and think through this a little bit. Uh, the first thing I noticed again is our 
nice large population size, um, which is really great. We have lots of different population samples all over uh, the Glacier Sea. I see here that this population is staying stable. So if we're thinking about our time uh, versus population graph, it is seeming like the population is kind of staying stable throughout this whole time that they were looking at the orcas. So I can go ahead and note that in this way. Um, so to think about that, we have to understand what does this mean for the moon jellies? And again, the orcas don't eat moon jellies. Um, they also are definitely not eaten by the moon jellies. So why do we really care about this orca? Well, they are the consumer population of the sea turtles, which are in turn the consumer population of the moon jellies. Um, and so that might be playing a role here um, and could be important for us to know. If the orcas are staying the same population, then they are going to have the same need for the same amount of energy. So they are not going to be eating the sea turtles any more or less um, than normal. And so we might not expect to see much of a change in the sea turtles because of the orcas, but there could be other reasons um, that we're seeing that. So again, we might want to look back and think about what the evidence was telling us about the sea turtles. All right, you guys, so that is all the evidence that we have about the moon jelly ecosystem. We have seen population samples from the moon jellies in lesson three. Uh, in lesson six, we got to see some evidence from their resource and consumer populations to find out evidence about what is occurring there. We saw today some evidence from other populations in the ecosystem. And now it is your turn to think about what all of this evidence means. You have figured out so much about how populations stay the same or change over time. It's time to use all of this learning and understanding to analyze this evidence and interpret it to make a conclusion about why the moon jelly population was increasing so rapidly. Now, I want to remind you that a correct answer is not necessarily a complete answer. You know so much, so make sure that you're really breaking down your explanation and fully explaining how all of this works. Just telling me the moon jelly population increased because of this thing is not a full answer. You can be able to explain all of the different parts and cause and effect patterns that are occurring here for this to happen. So I'm guessing that your teacher may have something posted on Schoology or maybe the other platform that your teacher uses. You might have the lesson handout uh, where you're going to do this assignment, but here is the time to really show what you know. You have learned so much and I'm so excited, I know at least, to read my students thinking about what is happening in the moon jelly populations and why this change has occurred. Before you leave, I just wanted to say that I've really enjoyed and I hope you have enjoyed getting to learn together over the last few weeks. It's been really hard to be away from my students, uh, so I'm really excited to be able to still teach science in some way um, and I'm really proud of the work that you've been doing. This is such an awesome unit because as you might know already, there are so many populations that are becoming unstable around our world. Lots of our species are, are becoming extinct and our biodiversity or the different amount of populations around the world are really changing. So if you enjoyed this unit, I really encourage you to look at the news and look into different ways um, that you can help out or, or advocate for these different populations of organisms that are becoming unstable around our world. What can you do to make a difference um, and make sure that they are staying stable and not increasing or decreasing rapidly? As we have seen how one small change can have such a large effect on the entire ecosystem. 
that we depend on um, for different kinds of things. Uh, so that's one reason to care. Human beings are using ecosystems for different resources, but beyond that, we want our planet to be healthy. We want it to be safe. Um, and so this is a really important way of making sure that that happens. Thank you guys for the last couple of weeks. I really hope that you've enjoyed it. Um, and I'm excited to hear from my students about their thinking. Bye.